There is a view that the current crises in Libya were foreordained, that 42 years of Gaddafi's dictatorship inherently meant fragmentation of authority and a bad security situation in Gaddafi's wake. This report puts forth another perspective, which is that there were numerous opportunities on behalf of the post-Qaddafi authorities, first the National Transitional Council, NTC, and then the General National Congress, GNC, to nip in the bud the question of fragmentation of authority. However, they chose an opposite tactic. They, very quickly after Qaddafi's fall in October 2011, paid off the militias. This subsidy strategy enshrined them in the political system and gave them power. Then furthermore, throughout the course of 2012 and 2013, the militias increasingly interfered in the political process, culminating in the April and May 2013 political isolation law. And the policy of the authorities, both the prime minister and the GNC at that time was, OK, we have no choice. We might as well give the militias what they want. And I believe this has caused something of a cycle because each time the government has caved in to blackmail and extortion, it has weakened its hand for subsequent engagements. This is most noticeable in the question of Ibrahim Jadran, the Federalist warlord who seized oil terminals in Libya's east. By not confronting him quickly, it sparked a range of copycat movements among the Berber and Amazigh in the west, among Tubu and Tuareg, and other groups saying, OK, we're going to cut off a pipeline to Italy until you meet our demands, or we're going to insist on having our language in the Constitution, in the case of the Amazigh, or we won't participate in the Constitutional Assembly. All of this has to do with the appeasement cycle. I wish that it was as simple to suggest how to break out of the appeasement cycle as it is to diagnose the problem. Unfortunately, it is not. The Libyan central authorities right now, both the institutions, the GNC, and the new prime minister, Ahmed Matig, they are getting dealt a bad hand. They don't have the cards to play, really, to cajole their opponents to stop blackmail and extortion or to allow the building up of a central police force and army which can control the security situation. However, given the bad hand they've been dealt, they must do as much as possible to reach out to the Libyan people and enlist them on behalf of creating a central authority that works with local councils, that works with nascent security institutions to govern the country. And this reaching out to the Libyan people, working with local councils, limited decentralization, is the only way forward.